welcome back out to the channel, Dom Hardy Outdoors. Hey, so today is gonna to be a little different. Um, we're gonna be talking about a Texas rig, how to, um, very simple setup. One of the easiest ways to catch a largemouth bass or smallmouth bass, um, in my opinion. And uh, if you're a new uh, fisherman getting into the sport of bass fishing, I think this is a key tool that you could have in your arsenal that you could just start off with, especially the basics, right? And catch a nice bass. Hey, so stay tuned and uh, we'll get right into it. So I wanna be talking about six things to do for a how-to uh, Texas rig. One, um, you know, what is a Texas rig? And then two, the best line to use for a particular Texas rig. Then we'll talk about, you know, the key setup of a bobber stop, uh, the specified weights, the type of hooks to use, and then the knot uh, to the hook, right? So a lot of those things are important and really it's driven off of what type of water you're fishing at the time what type of elements you're fishing in, whether it be structure, grass, or just simply sand bottoms, right? Uh, so we'll go into that here uh, in depth, and then you all will be able to tell the difference between uh, what type of hook to use for a longer worm and then a creature style bait or a Senko. So here you are, folks. This is a quick, simple uh, need to have uh, for a Texas rig. Over here, you see this category, you'll have more so your six inch to 12 inch worms, whether it be a curly tail worm or a straight worm. Um, this one is particularly a robo worm here, uh, dipped in a pink at the end. Uh, but particularly for these, you wanna go with that round bend worm hook uh, and that four out. So for all you new fishermen out there, when they say four out, you're essentially just looking for that four slash zero right there. Uh, this is the quickest way that you know what people are talking about in that round bend um essentially just straight right here and then it has that round bend to go up uh, but ideally you know this is perfect uh for these particular worms um per se because you could just uh, run it right up the hook and everything sits natural uh for these and then it's easier for that that particular uh, worm to swim uh, if, it, if it is a curly tail worm and then here, you know, you have your actual uh, different weights, uh, whether you be a tungsten weight or whether you have just a traditional lead weight. They're probably the cheapest option here uh, for all the budget friendly uh, fishermen out there. Tungsten, you know, they can get a little more expensive, uh, you know, especially if you lose them. Uh, but particularly when I go over the line, you know, that's probably some things you want to consider uh, if you're going to use tungsten, something with a, a little heavier, stronger line. So that way you can uh, get your bait back. Oh, right here is just your bobber stops, um, particularly for these. Uh, these are just fairly simple to use. Um, you're just going to take uh, that rubber uh, piece and then run it up your line um, and, and it go all the way up. Essentially, you just take that line and run it through one of these uh, oval wire pieces. And then essentially, like you just have it going right up there. Very, very simple to use, folks. Um, you know, I already did one for this one, but again, you just take that line, run it through one of these here, and literally pull that rubber piece off into the line. That's it, and it's on there. So for the type of line, right, uh, particularly for me, um, if I'm power fishing, power fishing means I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the, the thickest cover I see, uh, particularly on the water, whether it be a you know, beaver dam, just a simple lay down. Um, I'm all gonna. I'm gonna always go with a uh, 30 to 50 pound braided line, uh, preferably a darker color braid. Um, that way, the fish uh, has less um, sight to see of that line uh, when that particular bait hits the water. Okay, over here, this is more so the creature style baits, and then the Senko style bait here. More so your five to four inch uh, worms, uh, a little thicker than your particular straight worms right there. Then, you know, you, for example, I have a, a zoom speed craw here, a little smaller body uh, than your typical creature bait. As you see here, this is your, your thicker creature baits, uh, particularly, you know, made for if you want to punch something real heavy, uh, particularly, of course, you'll go up in size on these. And then this is the EWG hook here. These are better as far as set up for these particular baits. Um, so if you ever hear somebody say EWG hook, this one is pretty much a little different from the the uh, round bended worm hook. This has got a little curve in it, right? And uh, it just, it matches up perfect with those creature baits, um, and, you know, and those per those particular styles. Um, and, and that's a four aught as well. Uh, typically, I'm gonna always go with a four aught just for a basic setup uh, for that. And of course, you know, you could have any type of scissors, um, particularly for braid though, you gotta make sure you have a braided type of scissors that can cut through that braid, right? 
uh, fingernail clippers are a simple way to do that. However, it's a little tough for braid. Um, but occasionally I will fish fluorocarbon for these uh, particular setups. Um, you know, it depends on if the fish are starting to get a little finicky for that day, right? Um, if I notice that my partner may be getting a few more bites off of his fluorocarbon line, preferably probably 15 pound test, right? And um, I'm using braid. I'm going to go ahead and switch to a fluorocarbon for sure. Uh, maybe the fish just probably, they, they're starting to see that braid. I'm not sure at the time. Uh, you know, it's all about conditions and uh, what, what body of water you're fishing. So, hey, we're going to go ahead and rig this up and I'll show you. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to use the basic Cinco here that you could buy from any store and uh, put it on this EWG hook uh, with the lighter weight. I'm going to take my tungsten weight, simply just put it up the line. Always uh, the skinnier portion facing forward as the line goes through. Then as far as the type of knot um, to this particular hook, no other than a polymer knot, one of the best knots in my opinion for braid. Um, and I'm sure everybody can agree with that if you're not a beginner fisherman uh, per se. Always go from bottom to up. Simply just bring that line around, straight back through. And then once you get it back through that loop, we'll just pinch it a little bit. And make sure that's no twist in there. And just simply just gonna run it over top of that particular eye or uh, actual needle of the hook. Run it all the way up. Make sure when you bring it forward that it's actually above the cinch that you did earlier. You're just going to take both ends and then pull it forward. And then mind you, if you're going to use fluorocarbon, you want to make sure that's uh, nice and wet. But for braid, you don't have to do that. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut the end that's not my main line. Pretty easy with braided scissors, right? So now I have my polymer knot secured. Then I'm just gonna take my Senko hook here and I'm gonna actually run it up the hook. Uh, for, you know, for this one, it's fairly easy. You know, you wanna go in, uh, not even a half inch, barely, because you wanna make sure it stows properly right here. And I just run it up the hook so it sits well right in that pocket, running up there. Boom, it's in that little gap. Now, if you want to make it weedless, uh, just go ahead and take that measurement as you see here. So I'm going to start the needle of the hook here. And now, one thing I do to make it weedless is stick that needle in there. Boom, you got your nice, perfect Texas rig. Bring that tungsten or your particular bullet weight down. With your barber stop, slide your barber stops down. I just had two barber stops for the demonstration, but you only could use one if you want. Uh, but again, the heavier your actual bullet weight is, the more uh, you want to have to stop that from sliding up. But of course, this is probably only one eighth, so I only need one barber stop. So again, just a reminder, you only really need one barber stop. And then a lot of people, you know, depending on, um, you know, who you are and what fish you're, you're actually uh, cover you're fishing, um, you know, they'll barely take that uh, hook and they'll skin hook it on the side. Uh, so that way it's easier to set the hook for that particular fish. Um, barely skin hook it. So that way when you go to set the hook. She's ready to go. Okay, folks, I hope you all learned something. That is simply all you need to do a how-to Texas rig. Hey, I hope you can take this to your body of water and apply it and catch some nice bass coming up in the springtime. Thanks for tuning in.